Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to take you from A to Z on creating a digital invitation and collecting responses. So stay tuned. Now, this tutorial really should have been different tutorials. Now, I'm going to come into Create Design and I'm going to search for Invitation. And I'm going to create uh, an invitation that is portrait. Um, so it'll be tall, a little tall instead of wide. Um, so here we go. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to search for wedding invitations. Sometimes on the side they have a template style here. Um, sometimes when you click it, um, it shuffles around the colors. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. You can see there that you've got like a, um, a, a blue, it's filled in the blue um, outer border. That's a darker blue. So it all depends on, you know, your, your preference for the invitation. So um, then you would come in here and you would just modify this uh, with your names, um, obviously and you'll update the date. So if you double click in here, um, we can put um, Jill Smith and we can put in here Jack Hope and cordially invite you to celebrate their marriage on a Sunday, March 20. I'm just gonna change that to 24 at 10 a.m. And then um, you can put in there the um, time of the ceremony and the location. And you can put in here the um, location of the wedding reception. Now, normally, um, you would also put in um, the address. So, um, you know, don't forget about the address because people need to know how to get there, right? Um, and the same with the uh, reception here. You'll need to put in here the address. And with a digital invitation, what you're going to do is you're going to also include a link. So instead of having um, contact Estelle, um, da 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 da, what you're going to do is you're going to put in here. Um, respond, respond at the following link, and then you're going to include the link. Um, and then when you're downloading this, you're going to download it as a PDF and that way it will maintain the link. So I'm going to pause right now and I'm just going to call this wedding invitation. And now I'm going to go into my Google Forms because we're going to create the Google Form that's going to link down here. So I'm going to bring up Google Forms. And all you need to use Google Forms is a Google account. Um, it's free to create a Google account and it's free to use Google Forms or any of the other apps available. So to create the Google Form, all you do is press this plus sign and You'll see three options here. You'll see questions, responses, and settings. So let's go to settings first. 
and um, we'll just click, obviously this is not a quiz, you're collecting responses, and you'll want to collect email addresses. And um, so the options here is do not collect, verified, or responder input. So I would just select responder input, send responders a copy of the response, uh, meaning they'll get an email with all their response. Um, and you can do um, always or when requested. I think always is, is pro the best possible option. Um, do you want to allow response editing? And I would turn that on. Um, and I would also limit the response to one because you don't want people responding more than one time. That makes it very, very confusing because you know they might respond, yes, they're coming. And then later on, they might respond, no, they're not coming. And they might even send a third response. So it'll be hard for you to figure out which response is correct. So I would say turn this on to limit responses to one because they can always go back in and uh, modify their response right here. Allow response editing. You've turned that on. Now over here, it says presentation. Um, we, can sh we can show the progress bar. We, we're not going to shuffle questions. Um, that might be more useful for tests. Um, do you want a confirmation message? And what's that message going to be? So we can edit that right now to say, thank you for your response. Um, Jill and Jack. So we're not going to show a link to submit another response because um, it's we're only allowing them to submit one response. Now, you know, if you want to show the results summary of everyone else who has responded, you can turn that on if you like. It's totally up to you. Um, I'll turn that on just to let you see what that looks like. And whether you want to disable auto save. So I would just leave that as it is. That way they can always come back to the form and continue where they left off. Now over here you have some form defaults. Um, we're requiring the responders to put in their email address and the question defaults. We want to make all the questions required. Um, or we'll leave that off because we'll have, we're going to be adding another question in there. Like, for example, do you have any um, uh, dietary uh, needs? So not everyone is going to you know, um, respond to that question. So we'll just leave that like, um, like that. So we're not going to require people to respond to every question. Okay. Um, now the other thing that we'll want to do is we're going to want to come up here. Uh, you can, you, you don't have to, it's totally up to you, but you can customize the theme. Now, if we go back to my invitation, my invitation is blue. So I want to come here and I just want to, you know, select a color theme that's blue. Um, but also like on the header image, I want to select something that's blue that's going to go with my theme um, as well. So, um, you know, maybe like we can go with something like this or you can also upload something. Um, you can upload a photo from your library, um, or you can just keep, you can just look in here uh, for what, you know, will go. So I'm just going to choose that one and I'm going to insert it. And I'm going to go back to the questions here. So here is my form now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give my form a title. So the title to my form is um, wedding invitation responses and um, 
it'll automatically change the title here on my form. Uh, now it's collecting an email address, so we'll leave that. Um, you'll want them to input their email address. The first thing that you'll want to do here is you'll want to ask them for their name. So you can um, say, what is your first name? And that'll be short answer, and they'll put their short answer here. Um, so we will um, add another question. And the next question will be, what is your last name? So the reason why I'm separating the two names is because you may want to, at some point, send them an email using this email address. Uh, because what's going to happen is all the responses that are collected are going to end up in a Google Sheet, a spreadsheet. And you can use that Google Spreadsheet to later on send email uh, messages thanking them for coming to your wedding or um, you know, giving them a special um, gift, uh, digital gift, what have you. So that's why I'm separating it because um, you know, if it, depending on, if you're asking them to put their first name and last name in one, um, in one response, then when you're sending them the message, it'll say, you know, hi, uh, Hope Smith. Uh, instead, you can just personalize it further by just saying, hi, Hope. Um, so I'm, I'll just add another question. My next question is, how many individuals are attending or how many people um, whatever you want to put how many people are attending the reception and this can also be a short answer come in here and they'll write one two three four five whatever is the is their answer. So I'll add another one. Um, um, will you be having dinner with us? Right, so um, you'll want to know that because some people will not come for the dinner, they'll come after dinner. So that might be a question you'll ask and you'll see that it has a suggested um, suggested responses and you can um, add all of these okay so my next question is going to be do you have any dietary needs or restrictions and over here um, maybe we want to put a paragraph so that it gives them a little bit more room to write a response. You may also want to restrict the response by um, creating a multiple choice or check boxes. So um, check boxes might be something like, um, you know, gluten free options. Um, it might be dairy free option. Um, you may be pescatarian and you may be vegan. And you can go on and on and on, depending on how far you want to um, offer uh, substitutions. Um, if you're not offering substitutions, then obviously you wouldn't include this section. Now, other things that you might want to ask are for their mailing address. Because at some point you may want to put something in the mail to them. So that'll be a paragraph. 
another question that you might want to ask them is what is your phone number you can just leave that as a um, short answer uh, another thing that you might want to ask them is if they require hotel accommodations. So we'll put yes, no, and maybe we will remove maybe. So it's either yes or no. And maybe um, another question that you might want to ask in terms of organizing the seating is a question like would you prefer to sit at a singles table um, and you can you know also make that a yes no question uh, now obviously the, the questions that you ask in this survey are totally customizable and up to you depending on what you intend on doing them or how they're going to help you organize your wedding. So once you're done here, um, you also have the option to uh, customize the font. So depending on whether you know that's something that you want to do, um, we can um, customize the font here just to make it, you know, more appealing to the eye. And, you know, we're pretty much it in terms of creating the survey here. So I'm just going to close this up. And if you want to see what the survey looks like, you can come up here and just preview it. So this is what the survey is going to look like when the individual is filling it out. So because I'm signed in, um, it's collecting my email address. But again, we don't want to rely on this because someone may be filling out this form from someone else's computer. And so you don't want to make a mistake in terms of um, who's filling out the form and that's why we are asking them to key in the email address. So I am going to just key in my email address in here and I'm going to go through and fill out the form this wedding. And I'm not going to fill this part in. And um, I'm here I'm going to put one, two, three, six, seven, five, eight, nine. I'll just put no. And I'll put yes. And I'm going to submit this. And here's the response. Thank you for your response, Jill and Jack. Um, so now I'm just going to go back here and we can see now that we've got one response. And when we click on responses, um, we will see the responses plus a chart of how many have said yes, no, maybe. Um, and if you, we scroll back up, we're going to see link to sheets. Now, if we click that, you can get an email notification every time there's a new response. You can select the destination for responses. So I believe that is like the lo file location where it's going to go. And you can also download the responses. And that's what you're going to want to to do because you'll work from that spreadsheet. Um, so, you know, you can when you open up this um, sheet, it's going to have um, the responses from that were keyed in. And, you know, like I said later, you can um, send an email to the people who have responded, um, sending them a gift. You can, um, you know, send them a 
thank you card by mail because you've got their uh, address. Now you're probably asking the most obvious question right now, and that is how do I get this link over to my digital invitation? Well, if you come up here, uh, we'll see that there's a send button. Before you, you click on that send button, let's just look over here to see what's available here. Um, now, you, if you, someone else is helping you with the form, you can add collaborators here. There are add-ons that might be useful to you, like um, maybe there might be a map app that you can add here in terms of providing, um, you know, uh, a, a Google map of where the um, church is or where the reception is. You might want to include that on the actual invitation, uh, a link to Google Maps. That's totally up to you to, to, you know, that you can do. And, you know, we'll, we'll look at that maybe in a few minutes, um, how we can do that. But um, if to get the link, you can press this purple button and you can send the link by, um, by email invitation. But there's also this link here. Uh, and what we can, you can shorten the URL, you can shorten the URL or you can leave it long like this. So probably best to shorten it so that it's not so bulky and then come here and just press copy. And now what we'll do is we're going to come back here and we have here, you remember, we'll say respond at the following uh, link and you can either paste this like that in there now notice I've run out of space right so let's just grab let's just grab this um, stuff here and let's move it up a little bit that way um, the link is up here so there is the link right there now um, you notice that it's like not underlined and so it's really questionable about whether it's going to work or not and my guess it's not. Um, so what you'll want to do is you're going to want to come in here uh, because it doesn't know that it's a hyperlink so I guess there's two ways to do this. So you can just click that and go and uh, select it all and then you can click this uh, link button and attach the link you just copied again. Okay, and now when we click outside, we'll notice it's linked now. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that underline there, but um, you can also, uh, instead of, you know, putting that link there, um, sorry, I just moved that. What you can do is you can go back here and say respond by um, clicking here. And then what you can do is just you can um, select this and you can click the link button and you can paste that link, press enter. And now what you've got is you've got the, the, that word respond by clicking here you've got that the underline there and when you click it um, it'll take the individual to the form now let's test it out okay so I am going to uh, download this and you have to remember that the link will only stay active if you download it as a PDF okay so PDF um, you need to download it as a PDF. We'll do a PDF standard, okay? PDF standard, okay? And we're going to download that, okay? And now we are going to go to our files because we're going to go and find that um, link. I'm going to go to my downloads. And here's my wedding invitation. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So here it is, and here is the link. Okay, I'm going to click that link, 
and it's saying sign in to continue and here we go here's the form and now the person who's received your invitation can go in and uh, continue to fill out the form so it did require me to sign in because if you remember earlier on we decided to not allow individuals to complete the survey with multiple responses let me just bring that up again so over here when we're saying limit to one response um, we're turning that on so that people can only respond once so that requires individuals to sign into Google. So if you want in that individuals don't have to sign into Google, then you cannot limit to one response. So, you know, if you, if maybe someone doesn't have a, a Gmail account and you think that, you know, this is going to prevent them from uh, filling out the digital um, uh, RSVP, then you obviously will need to turn this off but it means that you know you might get multiple responses from one individual and then you'll have to follow up okay so that's just that's just a note um, you don't have to uh, allow or, or require people to sign in you can turn that off uh, but just note that then um, there might be duplicate responses and that's not a big deal okay but this is where you can change it, okay? So when they click the link, this, um, this, ooh, okay, sorry, let me go find it. Uh, okay, when they click, um, no, that's not it either. I've got so many windows open here. Okay, here it is. It's Edge. So this is where they're going to go when they click on the link on your digital invitation, okay? Now, Let's see what happens when I fill this in. And I'm not going to fill it in my number. I'm going to say no. And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to submit this. And now when I come back here to my wedding uh, invitation responses, I can see that I have got two responses. And so 100% of the people who responded have said yes they're going and then it's going to list the addresses and um, whether they need hotel accommodations and where they prefer to sit now uh, going back to the uh, canva invitation i want to talk a little bit more about the Google Maps because um, you know we'll, we we were talking earlier about you know including uh, the address and linking to Google Maps so that people can um, click on the link and see or get directions and how do we do that? All right, so. How do we link um, a Google Map into this? Okay, so I'm going to go to Google Maps and I'm just going to select any address. Okay, and I am going to select an address um, in New York. Uh, in, I'll just search here for a church. And here's a church right here. So I'm just going to um, click that. And you see this address here? I'm just going to double click it. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back to my wedding invitation. Uh, what was it called? Hope Church. Right? Hope Church. Hope church east village and I'm going to click that and I'm going to press the link button again 
and I'm going to paste that link from Google in there. Okay, so you can see now that I've got a link there again. I'm going to download this to test it. And again, it has to be a PDF document. So I'm just going to select PDF standard. I'm going to download it. And I'm going to go back to my files. And it's this one right here. I'm going to open this up. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. OK, now let's try out the Google Maps link and see what happens. Keep your fingers crossed, OK? It should bring us right to Hope Church East Village, uh, where we will be able to get directions. OK, there we go. See? Um, it's got Hope Church East Village. And you can just click here to get directions. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because my address will pop up. Uh, and I want to keep that as confidential as possible. But people can just click directions and it'll list out the directions on how to get to Hope Church East Village. Um, so that uh, we know that that does work for our invitation. All right, so from here, you're probably wondering, OK, well, I've created this beautiful wedding invitation. How do I get it into my email? to send it out a digital invitation. And I'm here to tell you that there is no way for you to embed this Canva design in an email, but there is a workaround. There is hope. So let's walk through the steps. The first thing you're going to do is you're just going to finalize the links in here. If you need to put, link this to Google Maps, you're going to do that. You're going to link this to your um, wedding invitation um, Google form, and you're going to collect the responses, and you're going to create any other links that you need to in here. Once you're done and you're happy with this, you are going to download this design as a PDF. All right, so um, you are going to download and you're going to download it as a PDF standard document to preserve the links. Okay, so we're going to download that. The other thing that you're going to do is you are going to download this document again as a JPEG or an image. All right, so um, and Stick with me because it'll make sense to you as we go through this. OK, um, so we're going to download and we're going to download this as a JPEG. All right. Now, the other thing that I wanted to just make a note of is that you also have the option to share this. Um, via a uh, website code or um, share the template link or a public view link. It's pretty much all the same, okay? Um, but once you've downloaded the image, then you can either attach the PDF file or you can attach the link. All right, so um, I have, I'm just going to bring up my email here and I'm going to show you what I recommend. Um, so let's say you were sending this invitation. Um, you could start off with the subject line saying um, you are cordially.
and you could um, you know make the font a little bit nicer um, and a little bit larger and so now what you're going to do is you're going to come to insert and you are going to insert a picture from this device you're going to come to your downloads and um, here is the wedding invitation you're going to insert it and from here you can make it larger if you want to make it larger that way you're not losing um, the beautiful image that you just created now note that the links are not live and that's why you need to come up here and you can either attach the PDF document by and let's um, attach the PDF document so you could attach attach files here's my wedding invitation so there it is right there unfortunately I can't embed this in here so my only option is to attach it um, or you can attach the link this link um, here so what you can do is you can come in here and you can say more and you can um, attach a public view link so you're going to copy that and then you'll go back to your email and you can put that there um, okay and um, so let's see how that works now so they've got the invitation the pretty invitation and they've got the link so when they open up the PDF they'll get this and you'll see that the links are still clickable right um, you see there if I click that I get my Google Maps and if I click this, I, all, I get the invitation again with the links, okay? So I just wanted to say that, you know, with Canva, it's not possible to embed uh, an HTML into an email, nor can you embed a PDF into an email, okay? It's just not possible. Um, I have researched that fully and I can fully attest that it's not possible. This is your best um, alternative and where you get to keep your digital uh, invitation card, where you're collecting uh, responses. Um, and, um, you know, I'm feeling that this is the best method if you want to send out digital invitations. Now, if we go back to Canva for a sec, um, you also have the option to um, professionally print invitation cards and send them out via mail. Uh, so that is also an option for you if you want to do that. All right, so I hope that you have found this tutorial. Um, you've learned something from this tutorial. Um, if you did, please do give me a like and a follow. That way you are the first to know when new content comes out. For now, my friends, bye-bye, and I will see you next time.